Hello, this is Eric Becker from Cummins and White, and this is the next video in our series on new employment laws for California in 2021. This video focuses specifically on the expansion of the California Family Rights Act. There are a number of different um, provisions in the CFRA that have been expanded, and it's important for all employers to understand uh, what their compliance obligations are when this new law becomes effective. Uh, we also have an overview video that talks in general about all three new employment laws that are important for employers to be aware of, as well as videos specifically focusing on the other two new employment laws, the expansion of uh, crime victims leave rights and the requirements that employers give notice to employees about COVID infected individuals in the workplace. But this video is going to sp focus specifically on some of the important things to be aware of when it comes to the expansion of the CFRA. So let's first talk about some of the basics involving this expansion. Of course, this law is effective January 1st, 2021. So after that date, uh, employees who previously were not eligible for CFRA leave will now become eligible. And that eligibility has been dramatically expanded. And this is the major thing that the CFRA expansion has accomplished. It now is applicable to all employers with more than five employees. Prior to January 1st, CFRA was only applicable to employers that had 50 or more employees, similar to the federal FMLA, Family Medical Leave Act. Now, if you have five employees, whether those five employees are in California or spread over the country, uh, your employees in California are going to be eligible for CFRA leave. And the basics of that leave are that employees are entitled to 12 weeks of leave once they've met the eligibility requirement, which is they've been employed but for one year and they have worked for at least 1,250 hours. They're eligible for 12 weeks to take leave for either their own serious medical condition, the serious medical condition of one of their family members, which has been expanded as we'll talk about, as well as to care for a newborn or newly adopted child. So now most employers in California are going to have to grant leave when employees request it for those specified reasons. Now, prior to the CFRA expansion, um, you had to have uh, 50 employees within a 75 mile radi radius of each other. The expansion has, a, has eliminated that language. So now whether you have five employees with three in the Bay Area and two in, in LA, it doesn't matter. You are going to be a CFRA employer. Prior to the new changes to CFRA, there was a parental leave law, which granted rights to employees to take leave for a newborn. And that law applied to employers that had more than 20 employees. But since CFRA has been expanded to employers with five employees, that law has now been revoked. The big expansion uh, under CFRA for both employers that used to be covered uh, with 50 or more employees or newly covered employers is that leave can now be taken to care for grandparents and grandchildren and siblings. Prior to this expansion, CFRA leave was only available to care for uh, close family members like children, spouses, or parents. But this of course expands it greatly. Uh, and it's important to re recognize that it does not have to be necessarily a biological grandparent or biological grandchild in order for the employee to be eligible to take time off. The expansion also eliminated the key employee exclusion. Uh, under CFRA previously, if you had someone who was the top 10% of wage earners at the company and they took a CFRA leave, uh, you did not have a duty to reinstate but that has been now eliminated and you have a duty to reinstate all employees at the end of their CFRA leave. And finally, 
uh, the CFRA now has a military exigency uh, leave similar to the, what the FMLA provides, which gives spouses and children of people who are on active duty or are called to active duty rights to take leave for, for instance, um, preparing for the spouse or parent to go on duty or to visit with the spouse or parent while they are on leave. So that is also a significant expansion because again, prior to January 1st, 2021, you only had to grant military exigency leave if you were covered under FMLA. So let's talk about some of the specifics of how these um, changes in CFRA are going to affect employers, both large and small. First of all, under FMLA and CFRA, prior to January 1st, you could only take leave to care for an adult child incapable of caring for themselves due to mental or physical disability. So previously, if you had an adult child, you know, age 30, let's say, um, and that child came down with a serious medical condition, you could not take CFRA leave uh, or FMLA leave to care for that child unless they had some sort of severe mental or physical disability. The revised CFRA eliminates that age requirement. So now an employee can take CFRA to care for an adult child with a serious medical condition, whether they have a physical or mental disability or not. The revised CFRA also eliminates a rule that used to allow employers to prohibit both parents from taking a CFRA baby bonding leave, meaning to care for a newborn, if they were employed by the same employer. So now, if you have mom and dad and they both work for you, mom is entitled to 12 weeks to care for the newborn and the father is also entitled to 12 weeks and that does not necessarily have to run concurrently. Let's talk for a minute about the interplay with the Family Medical Leave Act for employers that are FMLA qualified, meaning they have more than 50 employees. The CFRA and FMLA previously ran concurrently except for pregnancy. So previously, if an employee was pregnant and they were disabled uh, and they could not work, they would be entitled to take FMLA but they could preserve their CFRA for taking care of the newborn after birth. Now, under this new expansion of CFRA, it also will not run concurrently when, with FMLA if you are taking leave to care for a grandchild, grandparent, or sibling with a serious medical condition because FMLA does not in, uh, allow for leave for those family members. So it also does not allow leave to care for a non-dependent adult child. As I said previously, under CFRA now, you can take leave to care for a 30-year-old child that has a serious medical condition, but that would not run concurrently with FMLA. So you have a situation where employees could potentially be eligible for 24 weeks of leave in a 12-month period. 12 weeks for CFRA leave and 12 weeks for FMLA leave if they took their CFRA for caring for a grandchild, for instance, or caring for a non-dependent adult child, which is a pretty significant expansion. Now, for military exigency leave, CFRA and FMLA still run concurrently. So if someone goes on that type of leave, they would only have 12 weeks under both laws. Lastly, I wanna talk about the important things that employers need to do to make sure they are in compliance with this CFRA expansion. Uh, number one, you need to make sure that at your workplace, you've posted updated CFRA language on your employment posters that talk about the expanded leave rights. Next, you should revise your employee handbook, whether you're newly covered by CFRA or not, to make sure that the expanded language is included in your handbook for taking leave, for instance, for military exigency or to care for grandchild, grand, grandparents or siblings. And it's very important that when an employee does take a leave under CFRA, that you give them written notice designating that leave as a CFRA leave. 
And you must include a statement that the employee is guaranteed reinstatement to the same or comparable position upon conclusion of the leave. Otherwise, you're not in compliance with CFRA, even if you grant the leave, and that can pose some legal risk. So it's very important that as of January 1, you take all three steps listed here to comply with this new law. Now, if you have any questions regarding CFRA or the expansion of CFRA, please feel free to reach out to me, my email address and my phone number at the bottom of this slide. And I encourage you to go to our website and look for the other videos in this series. Uh, if you look at the top of the website, there is a menu bar that uh, has articles and videos. Click on videos, scroll down to labor and employment videos, and you will find this um, series, including our overview and also the videos on expanded crime victims leave and COVID-19 notice. This is Eric Becker from, Cumming, from Cummins and White. Thank you for stopping by and watching our videos.